going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. So you can see I have Premiere Pro opened up right now and this is the raw footage of the clip you just watched for the intro. So I'm going to play it through for you. What's going on guys, Casual Savage here and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. So What's going that is how I recommend you record yours as well. So say what you want to say, <laughs> and then when you want the pop out effect to happen, completely stop, try to pause as still as you can at the camera, maybe a few seconds, and then just say what else you need to say. So I'm going to go to the part where I pause. Do this, which is right here. I'm going to make sure this is set to full so we get the best quality. And then we're going to press this, which is going to export the frame or take a snapshot of what is on the screen. You can call this whatever you want to, you can see the path is already here. If you want to change it, simply select browse. And now this is where we head over to Photoshop. So while Photoshop's loading, I also recommend laying a marker down right where we took the snapshot. So now it is time for some masking. It's very simple to do. And first thing, make sure this padlock is unchecked. And we're going to head over to the pen tool. And then I recommend starting at a, a bottom corner. So I'm going to start here and I'm just going to left click and as you'll see, each time I'm left clicking, these dots will be coming out. For those that watch my tutorial on how to do this pop out effect in Sony Vegas, this is the exact same steps you'd be doing. So it's the same part as the masking. So you can see I've went all around myself and the final thing, we need to connect back up by pressing this one that we started on and now it's all selected. So we're going to right click and we're going to select make selection, select OK. Then what you can do is just press Control J on your keyboard and as you'll see over to the side on the layers, if we hide the background, you can see we just cut ourselves out like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I've done everything accurate. The ear looks a bit weird. That is okay. Of course, when you're doing it, um, make sure you do take your time. I was rushing it a bit so the tutorial isn't too long. But yeah, it's close enough. And now you have an option to make. Right here, you can either add in the text directly into Photoshop or you can add it in Premiere Pro. If you add it in Photoshop, of course, we can animate it in Premiere Pro. For me though, I'm just going to save the image as it is and I'll do all the text and animating in Premiere Pro. So come over to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as a PNG and I'm going to call it Pop Out. Select Save, OK, and it's done. So here's the image I just saved known as Pop Out. I'm going to drag and drop this in. As you'll see, it's right here as a PNG. I'm going to left click and drag and drop this onto Video Track 2 right where this marker was. Now I'm going to zoom in and we're going to decide how long we want this to last. So I'm currently on four seconds and I want this to last just two seconds like here. So I'm going to trim it down to this part here. And now it is important to note when we took the snapshot the very first time before we even went to cutting it out. The reason for that is because right here, if you are moving in the video, it may show behind you. So with the way we're going to counter that, we're simply going to trim the part out where we're going to be freezing, deleting that clip here. Then that JPEG picture we or the exported picture we first took, we're going to drag and drop it on. And I'll just shorten this down and put it onto video track one. And you'll see it's now going to be completely still, even the background. So the next thing, of course, is to make the pop out happen. So the way I am going to do this, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make the pop out last the entire time. So even when it gets to the end, I'll still be moving out, but then I'll snap back into position. So I'm going to head over to scale. I'm going to come right to the start and I'm going to press the animation button. Then I'm going to come across to the end last keyframe here. And I'm simply going to put the scale up like so. And I'll leave it there. So you'll see if I just play this through. That's what we get. I can slowly zoom out like that. Now we can add some effects to the background. So we can head over to the effects here. We can head over to video effects and for example, a blur. So I am going to be adding on a Gaussian blur onto the background, which is on video track one. So you can see if I add this and then we come over to the animation right here, I'm going to animate it again. So I'm going to press the blurriness uh, animation here. I'm going to make sure it's on zero here. But then when we get to the last keyframe, it's going to be at 100. So it'll be like that. So now if I play this through, you can see as I'm popping out, the background is also blurring as well. 
Then of course we can add some color. So color correction is right here. You can add a tint. So I'm gonna drag and drop this onto the background. As you can see, it's in black and white. But if we come down over here, you can choose the colors you want. So let's go for a cyan up here. And then along with a bit of a black, as you can see, it gives us that effect. So now if I play this through, that's the effects we get, it looks pretty good. And you can mess around with these colors. And of course you can also choose the amount you want to be tinted. So how hard the tint will be. So you can see the lighter it is, the softer the color will be. Anyway, now we're done with the animating part for the image and the background. What we'll be doing is adding some text. So for that, we're gonna head over to title, new title and default still. Select okay. Now you choose where you want the text. Um, I'm going to have mine on the left side this time because last time I done the tutorial in uh, Vegas I done it on the right side. So I'm just going to put casual savage. I'm going to come up here to change the font to something else. So the font I'm using is known as Geomanist and I'm simply just going to position this down here. Now any effects you want to add to your text will all be here. For example you can see the uh, color type of what the color of the text will be. You can also add a stroke here, inner stroke and a shadow. I'm going to be adding a shadow and I will be making it 100% opacity. So you can see that's what it's gonna look like. And I will also be adding a stroke, but just an outer stroke. So I'm gonna press add. And on the edges, of course, black, opacity 100, and the size is at 10, and I think that's a good size for me, so I'm gonna leave it there. Now, if you're gonna add more than one piece of text and you want them to come in at the same time, then by all means, just come back to the text tool and adding all the text right here. However, for me, I want Casual Savage to pop in first, then I want 50,000 subscribers to come in underneath. But we're gonna I'm not gonna do it here, so I'm gonna X out of this. And again, you'll see in my projects media that's popped up there. I'm gonna come back to title, new title, and default still. I'm gonna select OK, and I'm simply gonna drag out another box, and this time I'm gonna have 50,000 subscribers. Press Ctrl A, I'm gonna size this down. And I'll keep the font as Pepsi for this one and I'll just put it around here. Now you'll notice I'm not being completely accurate. Like I don't know where the casual savage text was actually placed, but I'm going to place it in a part where I think it will fit. If it doesn't, of course we can always adjust it. So I'm going to X out of this. Now I'm going to add on the casual savage text onto video track three or video track four. And I'm going to put this down here. Then I'm going to add uh, video track three, the 50,000 subscribers text. And you can see I was close enough. So I'm gonna press that title two and I'm gonna come over to position and we can simply change it from here. So you can see just like that, it is closed in. Now I'm gonna double click it because one thing I should have added was a shadow and a stroke as well. And I'm also gonna change the color for this one. I'll go with a gray color and select okay, X out of it and that's what I have. So for the animation part now, how we will make the text appear. So for this, we can either just use the uh, positioning so we can make it slide in, or we can use the scale, or of course, alternatively, we can come over to the effects, we can come over to video effects, and then we can head over to, I mean, video transitions, and then you can see there are some here that you can use. Now for me, I will just be adding in a slide because it's nice and simple. So I'm gonna drag and drop this on, and you'll see this is what we'll get. So that's for 50,000 subscribers and I'll want it a bit quicker so I'm going to trim it down. Then I'm also going to add on the same thing to casual savage text up here and trim it down. And I also want there to be a bit of an offset so you can see they're coming in at a bit of a delayed time and that's what I want so if I play it through the casual savage was first and 50,000 subscribers was like a few seconds later and the way you adjust that you can just choose how quick the uh, sliders are used. Then I'm also gonna slide them out. So I'm gonna drag on a slide, drag on a slide here as well. And of course I want the casual savage text to go first because it came on first and then 50,000 subscribers to go off last. So you can see that's the way we adjust that. And I'm gonna wrote, I'm gonna uh, animate it here and I'm gonna select reverse. So on both of them, so come down and reverse. And this is now what it will give us you can see the text goes back out that way. If we don't reverse it, if I just then check this for one of them, you'll see the text wipes out that way. With reversing, it actually looks like the text is pushed off screen. 
So I'm going to play all this through for you, and this is the final result. What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Premiere Pro and Photoshop. Now the rendered version of this is the same video you saw at the start of the video, so if it is lagging on the recording, I do apologise, but the rendered version is what you saw at the start. But that's it for this video, hopefully it has helped you, thank you so much for watching, please subscribe, rate, and peace.